centerpiece of the entertainment are guest readers and their uh, Roisin Meany and Matthew Sweeney. Roisin Meany was born in this old county Kerry. She started her working life as an elementary school teacher in 1980. Her first job in the Daisy Peter, which won the greatest bestseller competition that Tivoli publishers were running to launch themselves. Seven years and five novels later, she gave up teaching to concentrate on full time writing. Always great to see a practitioner giving up the day job. <laughs> <laughs> now then, today she's written six adult novels and two children's books. Three of her novels have made the top five in the Irish bestseller list, one going all the way to the top, and her writing has been translated into German, Spanish, Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian. Speaking of Norwegian, I first met uh, uh, Delectable Roshi in many years ago when Island Theatre cast us as the Norwegian ambassadors in Hamlet. Um, after the casting session, I was, I was um, playing Cornelius and she was down as um, Valtabond. And for some reason, only, known only to Terry Devlin, the director, she got the dialogue. And I said to, uh, I said to Terry, what do I do? Tom, you stand there looking significant. I reported back uh, to my other half and she said, what did you get? I, play, I got Cornelius. What do you do? I stand there looking significant. And she said, typecast that you <laughs> Our latest uh, adult novel, Love in the Making, will be published in the US in early 2011 under the title Semi Sweet. Our seventh novel, The Things We Do for Love, will hit Irish bookshelves next February, published by Hatchet Books Limited. She currently lives in Limerick with two badly behaved cats. And she reads stories to small children every Saturday morning in Limerick City Library at the Grand Prix. Ladies and gentlemen, Roshi Meany. If you want. I'm afraid it'll droop. <laughs> just, I'll just do that. Okay. I think it's picking me up a little bit now. Um, so, uh, Tom has taught you all about me, so uh, what I'll do is I'll just start by telling you that when I was 18, I finished a sentence using 10 words or less. The sentence started, I would like to win a Ford Fiesta because... <laughs> And it was written on the back of a cornflakes packet. Sorry, I, I shouldn't be rummaging and speaking. Um, and I was reading the back of the cornflakes packet as I was eating my cornflakes because there was nothing else to read. And I'm an avid reader. I have to be reading all the time. And uh, it was a part of a competition that Ford cars were running to launch the Fiesta in Ireland. So we're going back a long, long way. And I was just about to go into college, into Mary Immaculate, to learn how to be a teacher. I had no money. I couldn't drive. I um, needed money to um, put myself through college or whatever. So um, when I won the car, I sold it. And you may be wondering what the end of the sentence was. Um, I, I actually managed it in seven words. My father won't let me drive his. <laughs> I, I didn't actually think it was that good. <laughs> I didn't actually think it was that good at the time. I, I wrote it without really thinking about it, but um, subsequently the letter arrived that started, congratulations. So I realised for the first time the power of words. Seven little words got me a car. <laughs> I filed that information away and uh, did nothing much with it for another several years during which time I became a teacher. I taught in Dublin for two years. Then I decided I needed to see some of the world, so I went to Africa and I taught there. Older children, different color skin, but basically the same job for another two years. I came back to Ireland, back to the school I had left two years previously. No career break, but as luck would have it, there was a vacancy and they took me back. So I went back for another five years and taught again. And then I decided I wanted to head off again. I was a bit tired of teaching, so this time I thought, I'm going to leave the school, but I'm not going to teach somewhere else like I did before. And I was wondering what to do, and one of my cousins said, well, you like to do competitions, don't you? Because after winning the car, I got a bit hooked. And I uh, answered, I, I entered every competition I could get my paws on. 
especially if they needed a sentence to be finished in 10 minutes or less. And I won two holidays, a weekend in the Shelburne Hotel, a mountain bike, a watch, a jumper with Madison written across. Do you remember Madison, that non-alcoholic alcohol drink that didn't last very long? And I don't think the jumper lasted long. I think it went to the charity shop shortly after I won it because it was in this vile shade of green. Um, anyway, so I was hooked on competitions and loved thinking of pithy endings to sentences. So my cousin said, why don't you look for a job that requires you to work with words since you seem to have a bit of a tendency to, you know, do it quite well. So to make a long story short, I ended up going to London and working in advertising. I wangled my way into an ad agency and got a job writing ads and leaflets and brochures and I was in my element, it was wonderful, and the beauty of it was, unlike teaching a class of junior infants, I could actually go to the loo in the middle of the day and read the paper if I got bored at any stage. So it was very different. And after three years of doing that, we're in the mid-90s at this stage, I um, decided that, after all, I wanted to go back into teaching because my heart was more in it than in the advertising. So I came back to Ireland and I taught for a further uh, about six years or so, but in the meantime, um, I went job sharing. And um, while I wasn't job sharing, I was thinking about writing a book, but <coughs> that's as far as I got until 2001. I decided it was time for another break. And this time I went to San Francisco, where one of my brothers happily lived. And I moved in with him. He's here tonight. Thank you, Kira. He's hiding. In case he knew I was going to draw attention to him, so he got a chair out there. Um, so I went to San Francisco and I decided it's now or never. It's time to write the book. Um, we're now in 2001, so it was actually 21 years, sorry, 23 years since I had won the car with my seven words. And so it took long enough for me to try my hand at kind of developing that, finishing the sentence thing. So, to make a long story short, I wrote my first novel, I think Tom might have mentioned that, in San Francisco, called The Daisy Thinker. When I had finished what I thought was a pretty okay book, I emailed uh, my friend back home, who had just had her first novel accepted for publication, Judy Curtin is her name, some of you might know her. Um, and I said, what do I do now? I've just finished my book, where do I send it? And she said, well actually, my publishers are running a competition and <laughs> the prize, <laughs> uh, the prize. <laughs> yes, surprise, surprise. The prize is a two book deal. So um, I entered my book, and yes, you best it. I won the competition. So my first two books were published with no rejections whatsoever, which um, I feel terribly guilty about when I'm talking with other writers because I can see the hate in their eyes. But um, I, not to worry, because I got my comeuppance with my third book, which nobody published, which was rejected by every publisher in Ireland. Um, I had got myself an agent at that stage, and my first publishers, who were Tivoli, the fiction imprint of Gillan Macmillan, folded after my second book was published. I like to think I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I sincerely hope I hadn't anyway. So they were actually, they had read the first draft of my third book, my editor had read it and she seemed quite happy with it, but tragically, as I say, they didn't live to publish it. So my, my uh, agent sent it around and nobody wanted it. So that brought me down to earth. 